copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars attention. Broadcast 212 at 5th and Olive to 50 officers. That is all. Department. for your life, you'd get the best lawyer in town. Fortunately, you're in no such predicament. But friends, the life of your motor is at stake. And it's up to you. You can send it to a premature death by forcing it to use inferior motor fuel, or you can add to its lifespan and usefulness by always giving it a diet of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. No less authority than the officials of 30 leading cities and counties throughout California declare that the lives of your police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other public serving cars are prolonged by the exclusive use of this superior fuel. They are on record as specifying Rio Grande Cracks because they have proved that Rio Grande Cracks delivers quicker starting, steadier acceleration, greater reserve power and speed, and more miles for the taxpayers' money. Drive in to the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood tomorrow morning. Take aboard a tank full of this finer motor fuel and begin getting in your car the same police car performance that has made Rio Grande crack the most highly endorsed gasoline in the West. appreciates the cooperation of law enforcement agencies in making possible this series of programs by opening to us the confidential files of their department. We have therefore asked Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department to prepare a foreword for our program. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. I can best preface this program by quoting the words of Captain Edward Chipwood of our local narcotic division. He says, I wish I had time and the facilities to impress upon the American people the plots which I know, to my horror, are in motion to make this nation a dope-ridden land. Then I would have the satisfaction of sending more of these diabolical plotters into prison cells and of shocking millions of our citizens into action. Our story tonight is only one part of this insidious traffic. Multiply it a thousand times, and you may have some idea of the enormity of the trade. I shall have more to say along this line at the end of the program. In a remote section of a northern state of Mexico, just south of the Big Bend country, a general confers with his adjutant, Juan Vaca. Juan? I have orders to watch for a shipment of narcotics being smuggled into the United States. Are the drugs coming through here? Well, apparently, the smugglers have grown bold. How much do you think they are carrying? According to the information I have received, there are drugs worth a million dollars of American money being carried by these smugglers. But where in Mexico is there so much dope? It comes in from Japan. And then it is brought north and smuggled into the United States. When do you expect this? Caravan. It is due to pass this way at dawn, and it's heavily guarded by armed men. So they have the protection of our government? Of course not. But there are other officials who are not always conscientious about enforcing the law. What do you propose to do? I propose to stop this shipment, Juan. And have you stopped it, General? That Juan waits for mañana. Si, mañana por la mañana. Si. In the morning, the general mata la monastery. Si, si. The general kills the dawn. A few miles to the south, a group of men, high-powered rifles carried carefully across saddle bows, rode toward the camp of the waiting general. Hey, 
How much further is it? Oh, not far now, senor. Only a few miles. Yeah, that's what you've been saying for two hours. It is only a matter of 15 or 20 miles now. What about the soldiers in this section? Oh, there are none that I know of, senor. Well, it's going to be too bad for anybody who tries to stop us now. Listen here, safety. Oh, your troubles only begin when you reach the United States, senor. I know. I have been there before. Yeah, that's what Ramon told me when he sent you with me. Hey, there's so many trips you made. Oh, maybe a dozen, maybe more, maybe less. <laughs> I don't know. Did you ever have any trouble with soldiers, the customs men? <laughs> oh, see, si, senor, many times. Yeah. Well, what'd you do? Well, sometimes we fight, sometimes we run, sometimes we just pay. Pay? Si, senor. Well, sometimes it's easier to pay a few pesos and go free than it is to stay and fight. Well, I'm not paying, see. I'm fighting. That is okay, senor. Every man to his own humor. <laughs> Me? I do not care to die. You mean if there's a fight, you'll run away? Uh, Pedro runs away from no man, senor. It is jefe says stay. Hell, hell, jefe has said stay. Still, uh, senor, I do not wish to die. Ah, die, die, die. Try talking about something pleasant once in a while, will you? Hey, you guys, come on up here. This guy's getting me jittery. I'll keep your side on. Now we're getting fairly close to the border. You birds stay close in. Hey, what's that devil? Who's that? Come on, let him have it. Senor, Senor, we better run for it. Run? And risk losing a million dollars worth of morphine? Don't fear. Well, that is better than losing your life, Senor. Not for me, it ain't. Oh. Do not shoot, Soldado. We surrender. Roll him away. Uh, see, we do that, Senor. Only please do not shoot. Where are the drugs you're carrying? Here, in the bag the senor was carrying. Uh, the man you killed. All right. Keep your hands up. Please, senor. Do not shoot. <laughs> they are all dead, senor general. Si, yes, la verdad, Juan. The general always kills at dawn. <laughs> Take a letter. Si, sí, senor. To the commanding general, Department of the North. At dawn on this date, a detachment of my men discovered what they believe to be a band of smugglers. Unfortunately, the suspected men began firing on my troops. A very foolish thing. Yes, a very foolish thing. You may include that one. Si, sí, senor. My men returned the fire, and as a result, six men of the suspected group were killed. Shall we say more men, General? No, no, I think six is enough. Continue. It was found, however, that the men were not to smuggle. What, General? But were instead evidently escaped prisoners. I have buried the bodies near my camp. Oh, have you attended to that one? Si, Senor. Uh, We will not mention that uh, three of the men were Americans. It would not be wise. No. Continue. There was no way to identify these men. New paragraph, Juan. It is my duty further to report that in the fighting, my trusted lieutenant, Juan Vaca, was killed together with four of my men. I, General? See, Juan, you and four others were killed in that fight. General, I do not understand. You will in time. Finish the letter. Si, Senor. Yes. It is ready for you to sign. Uh, Bueno. I'll send it later. Now, uh, you remember the rancho I own in New Mexico? I remember it, General. That will be your home from now on. How about the narcotics? That is my problem. When you have established yourself, you will send your wife to me. Through her, we will smuggle the drugs into the United States. Your job will be to sell them. I see. That will be easy. I know many men who will help me. Uh, bueno. But do not trust anybody. Not even your wife. I will not, senor. You will take orders from me, just as you do now. I will tell you when to sell and when not to sell. Meantime, get ready to start. You cross the border at dawn. Our scene shifts to Los Angeles and to the office of Captain Chipwood, head of the narcotics squad of the Los Angeles Police. 
Well, look, you might as well stop stalling and tell us what we want to know. But, geez, Cap, why pick on me? Why don't you go after the big guy? You've been peddling dope and we know it. Yeah, but I'm just a piker compared to the big guy. Go get him. What big guy? Oh, Cap, I'd tell you if I knew, but honest, I don't know. Hey, stop trying to give me the runaround. I ain't doing that, Cap, honest. This guy's the biggest bird that ever hit the coast. He's got tons of this stuff. Okay, name one man who's seen this big guy or talked to him, and I'll give your case my personal attention. I'll do what I can for you. Well, Cap, now let me think. There's a guy named Fox mixed up in it somewhere. I don't know just where. I ain't never seen him, but I know he's in on it. And that's all I do know, Captain, so help me. All right, I'll find out if you're telling the truth. Lock him up, Brown. Yes, sir. Say, wait a minute. I want you and Bozart to get out of here and see what you can dig up on this for me. Remember that little Korean Edo we had in here last month? Sir, uh, do I remember him? Will I ever forget him? I'll see if you can pick him up again. I want to ask him some questions. I'm going to circulate around on Central Avenue and see what I can find out. <laughs> Quietly, Captain Chitwood and his men drifted through that section of Los Angeles where those who take and sell dope circulated. Asking few questions, ever alert for some clue, some whisper that would lead to the big guy. Slicing a big roll, Chitwood let it be known that he was interested in a racket so secret that even he would not talk about it. To such a crowd, such a racket meant one thing, dope. One evening, pretending to be drunk, he stood at a bar in one of Los Angeles' most notorious dives. Hi, Joe. Oh. Hiya tonight, partner. Swell. I'll buy you a drink. Yeah, not on your life. I'll buy you one. Okay. Bourbon, Slim. Yeah, me too. I, I hear you're interested in buying, well, something besides liquor. Gee, uh, me? What do you mean? Ah, oh, not so loud. You know what I mean. I do not. I'll give you the idea that I'm in such a racket. Oh, never mind how I know. I do. That's enough. I just thought I'd tip you off to something. Well? There's a new guy in a racket here. Oh, that's so? Yeah. Maybe I could get you to him. So? Only you don't deal with small fry. Big stuff only. Yeah, how big? Fifty grand and up. That's <laughs> nuts. You call that big? Say, this guy has got more dough back of him than you've ever seen. Yeah, so what? And he's got more stuff to peddle than you can ever sell. It says you. You heard me. So where'd he get it? In Dreamland? Now, keep this under your hat. It comes from Mexico. Yeah, I know. Right through the custom guard. Tell me another one. I'm telling you straight. Now, besides, he's got plenty of protection. Right in this town, too. <laughs> yeah, that's your story, and you're stuck with it. Well, I got a date. I'm scrambling. Be back tomorrow night? Yeah, maybe, if you've got any more fairy tales to tell me. Oh, nuts. <laughs> boys, was what I found out about the big guy. Hmm. Uh, Beauchard's got Ito in the other room. You want to talk to him? Sure. Maybe he knows something more than we do. Well, we found out plenty in some of the dumps we've been in. Seems that this stuff hasn't started coming in, but everybody seems to know there's a new bird in the ragged. Well, we'll soon find out what our little brown brother from Korea knows. But, Lieutenant Beauchard, I don't know anything about it. How are you, Ito? Captain Kidwood, what is this all about? Now, calm yourself, Ito. We aren't after you. We just want some information. I'm no stool pigeon. Well, that's a matter for interpretation. However, we're here and you're here to find out something. I want to know who Fox is. I don't know. Come on, don't stall. I'm not stalling, kid. We're... Listen, we know exactly how much you do know about Fox. And if you don't want a rotten jail, you'll talk. Uh, all right. Uh, I do know Fox. He came to me to sell me some junk. He said he had hundreds of dollars worth of it. Yeah, what does this guy Fox do? He has a real estate office. He works out of some, too. It makes the throat front. <laughs> I imagine it does. Where is this joint? He's got an office at Fifth and Olive. You can find him there. All right, Ito. I hope for your sake that you're telling the truth. You can go now and keep your mouth shut. Thanks, Captain. I have told you the truth. They put a tail on him, Bozart. Don't lose sight of him day or night. Hand me that phone, will you, Brown? I'm going to call Harry Smith. This looks like a job that we're going to need federal help on. <laughs> Thus, 
with a bona fide lead with which to build his case, Chitwood calls in the federal narcotic agents. In Chitwood's office, Harry B. Smith, supervisor of the government's narcotic bureau, listens to the story. And that's the story so far. Well, what next? Well, we've got to find some way to get in touch with this big shot before he floods the country with his drugs. Exactly. And I believe we should use an Oriental if no, possible. That's, that's what I figured. We have a man who's worked for us before. He just got in this morning. He's beneath getting the heat off from the last job he helped us on. Now, he has subs from his steamship tickets and hotel receipts from Eastern Hotels. He'll be above suspicion. Good man. Let's use him. Is he honest? As honest as the day is long, and he hates the traffic. If we had more men like Henry Tang, we'd have less to fear from the drug trade. Yes, but how will he be able to get in on this? Well, I've rented two suites in the hotel downtown. We've wired Dick to grass into the suite Tang to occupy when he gets firmly established, he'll contact Fox and make arrangements. Well, Mr. Peter. Fox, as I've told you, I'm new here. I have some money to invest in leases. I would like to see what you have to offer. Just uh, what sort of leases, Mr. Chang? Something in real estate. Or shall we say uh, an office building, perhaps? Well, I've got some pretty interesting properties on my list. Suppose you bring something over tomorrow and we'll discuss it. Fine. I'll do that. Now, there you are, Mr. Chang. As pretty a lease as you ever saw. Now, there's a piece of property. Uh, do you know Mr. Ito? Yeah. What's that? I say, do you know Mr. Ito? Oh, yes, slightly. I am interested in the sort of property Mr. Ito buys. You are? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so? I think I can do something along that line. You have the property to sell? No, but uh, a friend of mine does. Yeah, I'd like to have you meet him. My honorable ancestors shall not rest in peace until I have done so. Well, I'll get in touch with him. But I warn you, he deals only in big figures. That is the only way I deal. Maybe we could do business, he and I. Say, can't you do business through me? Don't worry, my friend. I shall see that you get your commission. As a matter of fact, I will match any sum your friend pays you. Well, now, that's mighty white of you. I mean, I... Uh... <laughs> yes, I, I understand perfectly, my friend. <laughs> during which Fox made many calls to the suite of Henry Chang. At the headphones in the adjoining suite, Chitwood or one of his men waited the interminable hours. Then, one day, two weeks later, Fox arrived with another man. Mr. Chang, this is the boss. Uh, this is Mr. White. Mr. Chang's the gentleman I spoke to you about. How do you do, Mr. Chang? I'm mighty glad to know you. Fox here has been telling me a great deal about you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was pleasant. Certainly it was. Just the same, I'm here to see for myself. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. I've been wanting to meet you. Uh, I never deal through a middleman. You're not dealing with a middleman now. Then let us get down to business. No, 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 not so fast. You understand, of course, I must communicate with my partner. I uh, must know what size lot you want to deal with. Just who is your partner, may I ask? Certainly. The fellow living down in New Mexico. Now, uh, what size lot did you say? The bigger, the better. I see. And how do I know you can afford to pay for any large amount of C or O or M? Assuming, of course, that I see they're delivered to you. I can show you a certified check for $50,000 any time you care to see it. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, don't misunderstand me, though. I am not turning over such amount to you as that until I am certain that the stuff I get is of good quality. Oh, never give it a thought. Why, it's as pure as the, shall we say, 
drifted snow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, you buying this for yourself alone? I do not see that that enters into it. But for your information, I represent the Chicago Syndicate. Mm -hmm. We uh, would just as soon buy it from you as anybody if your stuff is good. Moreover, we have got to know that you can supply the demand once we have started using your stuff. Now, don't let that worry you. My supply is unlimited. Do you mind disclosing the source of this supply? Not at all. Down in Mexico, there's a certain general who has plenty of power and influence and an easy country. <laughs> One day, he received word of a large shipment of morphine, which he smuggled through the border. Well, when he tried to stop it, the guards got spry with their trigger fingers. And it became necessary for the general to eliminate him. And there he was with a billion dollars worth of fine Japanese morphine on his hands and nothing to do with it. So what was the poor general to do? He had to find a market for the stuff or destroy it. And then? Well, the general, being a true businessman, waited. And while he waited, he investigated the drug traffic and decided that the United States was the logical market for his merchandise. Did he bring it all into this country? Why, bless you, no. As a matter of fact, he's still in Mexico, still commanding his garrison down there. He sends the stuff across to his agents here. And my partner is one of them. And who is this general? The general? <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea. All I know is that Vaca, he's my partner, used to be in the same outfit with this general. And that's how I came to know the story. Well, how do you know he will ship the stuff if I do buy it? <laughs> Mr. Chang, you just show me the 50000 and I'll guarantee delivery. I do not think that would be a wise step. No? Why not, not? Until I have seen the drug and know its quality. Suppose you order $500 worth. If it is up to standard, I'll take the rest. Well, uh, I don't know how the general will take that. If he's a proud man, he'll resent it as a slur on his honor. In that case, we cannot do business. I cannot sit around here for weeks letting him nurse his pride. Either order the $500 sample or forget the whole thing. No, no, just wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't say we wouldn't do it. Uh, <clears throat> you see, uh, mm, I'll have to put in a call to my partner and see what he said. That is all right with me, but let us get started. Be here tomorrow. I have the check. I pay the 500 when the drug arrives. Next day, White returned, and after satisfying himself as to the authenticity of the check showed him by Tang, he departed and wired Baca in Sunaco, New Mexico. Shipwood's men immediately secured a copy of the telegram and decoded it. A week elapsed, another, and a third. Finally, the inactivity began to tell on officers and criminals alike. Shipwood and the federal agents kept a constant watch on the hotel rooms and on White and Fox. Investigations conducted by the federal agents in New Mexico revealed that Baca, surrounded by his henchmen, was a most deadly and feared man. Finally, White telephoned Baca and received assurance that the sample shipment was on its way. At last, the crucial day arrived. Shipwood and his men, poised, ready to spring, sang, ready with marked money, awaited White's arrival. Come in. I had about decided the deal was off. Oh, bless you, no. My things were never better. Where is the stuff? It's on its way. It'll be here any minute now. And who is bringing it? Why not wait and see? This is no time for games. No, no, no. Don't be so impatient. The stuff is coming. You are mistaken about my motives, my friend. It is not impatient. I am merely tired of the delays. It would have been better if I had looked elsewhere. Oh, no. You mustn't feel that way. Why, think of the amount of this stuff we can get. Oh, excuse me. Oh, come right in, Mrs. Vaca. How do you do? How is your husband? Oh, he's fine, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is Mrs. Garcia, a friend of mine. How do you do? Uh, you can get your things off right in the next room. Right in here. Ah, uh, that's it. That's fine. <laughs> what, what is this? The white slave act? This party? 
for a narcotic delivery. <laughs> Splendid, Mr. Chang. Splendid. No one can say you Orientals haven't got a sense of humor. You ready, Mrs. Vargas? Please, here you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Chang, here's a nice little linen girdle. We turn it over like this, and there you are. Nice, fresh cotton morphine. Oh, <laughs> very good, very good. Have you a pencil? Pencil? Oh, to be sure. Yes, yes. I wish to test it. Oh, it is very good trade. Here is the other girdle, Senor Fox. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Listen, how do I know that you will not double-cross me and turn me over to officers? Officers? Oh, Mr. Chang, I'm surprised. <laughs> officers, indeed. Now, you don't have to worry about that. Don't you know the mayor of this town is on my payroll? Oh, that is so? Yes, and not only that, but the district attorney and I are just like that. Just like that. That. Mm -hmm. And the local narcotic man. Ho, <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Why, he eats out of my hand. Oh, you know the narcotic officer in the police department? Know him. Why, I've had him under my thumb for months. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> well, here is the 500. Thank you. Pick him up, right? You too, ladies. Who the devil are you? Take it easy. Keep your hands in the air. Thanks, Henry. Good work. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Hey, what is this? Get out of my private quarters. My quarters, Mr. White. Hey, who are these men? What what was this mean? Two uh, by the door are federal narcotic agents. The other two over there are narcotic agents from the police department. Who are these women, Sam? Uh, Mrs. Vasher and a friend, Mrs. Jasper. Well, that's the names we heard on the pictograph. I just wanted to be sure. Where's your husband, Mrs. Vasher? New Mexico. You never get him. Maybe. If you do, you'll never convict him. His men will take him away from you, right under your very nose. You're yeah, confident, aren't you? Brown, handcuff those two men, will you? Come on, you two. You two women wear these linen girdles in here? See, si, under our dresses and coats. The customs men knew better than to search us themselves. And they've never been suspicious enough to have a matron do it. You're pretty sure of yourselves, aren't you? I am. Now, look here. I've stood about enough of this. Who are you, anyway? Oh, don't you know me? Know you? Why, I don't know you from Adam. <laughs> this is Captain Kitwood, the, the man who eats out of your hand. What? Uh, he's been after your thumb for months. Oh. Yeah, you know, you and the D.A. are just like that. Well, let me see you get out of this rap. Now, take them down to the station, boys. Send the car around for these women. Two years later, a detachment of soldiers are encamped just below the Mexican border. A man walks into camp and inquires for the commanding officer. Senor General. Uh, Senor General. <coughs> oh, uh, pardon me for waking you at this hour. But the man mm. says he must see you. Mm. Well, who is he? He's I, Senor General. Juan Vaca. Oh, oh, so. Juan, you're back, eh? Yes, Senor. I have served my sentence two years in prison. Two years in American prison, eh? <laughs> How did you like it, Juan? It's not so good, General. Uh, it has been a long time since we have seen each other, eh? <laughs> not since the other dawn. That is right, Senor. At sunrise five years ago, it was that I left. And that dawn had looked down on six others. Dead. That was the beginning of a good fortune, Juan. <laughs> I'll never forget the expression we used that day. El general mata al amanecer. Si. <laughs> El general kills at dawn. <laughs> I shall never forget it, senor, never. Even in prison, <laughs> I thought of it. See, <laughs> 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 Juan, el general mata al amanecer. The general kills at dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Just a moment, we will hear again from Chief Davis. 
We of the Calling All Cars cast sincerely believe Rio Grande de Crack is the finest gasoline made. But in the event that some might think us prejudiced in its favor because we are in the employ of the sponsor, we do not ask that you take our word for it. We refer you to the drivers of police cars and other emergency equipment who tested all brands and finally chose Rio Grande de Crack as the gasoline which met all the rigid requirements demanded in the performance of imperative public service. Then your public service drivers rolled up a total of 55 million miles of emergency driving over California highways in a single year. These men who drive 100 miles where you and I drive one have assigned to Rio Grande de Crack the exclusive responsibility of powering their cars in all kinds of weather and under the most trying conditions. Don't wait until the first of the year. Resolve now that you will begin giving your police car performance tomorrow morning. And follow up that resolution by driving into the nearest red and white Rio Grande station for a full of Rio Grande Crack, the most highly endorsed gasoline in the West. And now, Chief Davis. The sound that Frederick Grant White was under conviction on a previous charge, which was then pending on appeal. He was sent to McNeil Island and later transferred to Alcatraz to forestall extradition sites when released. He is now in Folsom Prison, serving his original sentence. Mrs. Vacca and her friend each received 30 month sentences, Mrs. Garcia dying in prison. As far as we know, the general is still operating. White recently applied for parole a plea which was, which was denied, a fact that should make all citizens thankful and remind the criminal that crime does not pay. Thank you, Chief Davis. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, Bidding you good night for Rio Grande.